What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're going to have some fun with the extension JHS Power Bar and some of the functions contained within that extension. Before we get started, I want to take a second to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to David H. and Paul Hedges. Patreon, as most of you know, is one of the websites where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So um, if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week. Make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a lot of you know, JHS Power Bar is an extension that contains... It's an extension made up of a collection of some of the most powerful extensions for SketchUp. So they've all been kind of conglomerated into one extension. And I wanted to talk a little bit today. I wanted to have a little bit of fun with the FFD extension and also the split up tool. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here real quick and we're just going to start by drawing a rectangle. So in this case, I'm going to draw a rectangle like this one. Just kind of a tall rectangle um, just like this. And so what we're going to do from here is we're going to take this and we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy of this. And so I'll just inference off of this a little bit, maybe to about here. And I'm just going to rotate this 30 degrees, but I'm going to tap the control key first in order to enter copy mode. And then once I hit enter and place this at 30 degrees, then I'm going to type in times and then 12 to give me 12 copies. Well, what that does when we create 12 copies is that'll copy this 12 times each one 30 degrees from the last. And so now what we can do is we can take this and we can use the FFD extension in order to um, in order to uh, kind of deform and uh, create different things with this shape. And so I'm going to start off and I'm going to make a couple copies of this just so I have them. And I'm going to start off with this first one, and I'm just going to select the whole thing. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to click Make Group. And so when I click Make Group, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button for FFD 3x3x3. Three by three by three. And what that does is that runs the extension FFD, which gives you a series of control points that you can use in order to adjust the way that something looks inside of SketchUp. And so you can see how if I take this, and I start messing around with these control points, that's going to adjust different things having to do with this shape. So you can see how if I kind of scale this in, this is going to deform that shape based on what I do with those control points. And that's actually a full extension as well, so you can add more control points. Um, but the thing about this right now is right now if I take this and I start trying to do anything with the center of the object, you can see how nothing's really working. And the reason nothing's really working is because this geometry isn't split up at all. So like for example, if I was to undo what I did before and take that back to here, if you look at this, this is just a rectangular shape that goes from base up to the top here. But what it needs in order for this control cage to work around the middle is it needs this geometry to be split up or broken up a little bit. So like for example, what I would do is I could take all of these boxes and I could run the, the extension split up. And what split up is going to do is that's going to take a rectangular shape and it's going to split it up into a number of different divisions. And so in this case, we're going to set this to two divisions. So what that's going to do is that's going to divide that face once across the middle this way and once across the middle this way. And that can be useful for a lot of different things. But in this case, we've used that to now be able to come in here with FFD and make more adjustments. So now if I come in here and I make this a group and then I run FFD, now... If I was to come in here and select these control points in the middle and scale them in, you can see how this object would actually adjust based on that. So now I have more control over what I can do here. So I can take this top and I can rotate it. I can take the middle and I can scale it. I can rotate it. I can adjust it off to one side. You can see how you can use this control cage to do a lot of different things and allow a lot of different um, adjustment. So I could scale that in kind of like this. So you can see how that gives me the ability to all of a sudden come in here and create some really interesting shapes. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the soften edges function in order to come in here and soften all of this so that that hidden geometry on those faces doesn't show up anymore. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here
here one more time with this last group of geometry, and we're actually gonna split that up a bunch more. So instead of two divisions, I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna do something like five divisions. And so that's really gonna split this up um, a bunch more. So you can see how that splits that into five pieces vertically and then five pieces horizontally. Well, now if we come in here, we group this, and then we run FFD, we're gonna get an even smoother transition so you can see how because this is actually split up by five instead of by two, you get a much smoother curve along this object when you do this. And let's say that we were to come back in here and undo this and actually split all of these up by 10, it would get even smoother. But you do have to be kind of careful about this because you start creating a whole bunch of geometry in here. And if you're not careful, you can create so much that SketchUp struggles to handle it. But if we do this to 10, activate FFD, and then start clicking on our control points, we can come in here and we can start scaling this base down if we want to, and you see how we get this nice smooth curve. And then from here, we could select these control points and do a little bit of a rotation. So let's say I wanted to rotate this 20 degrees here, and then I could select the top ones and rotate those another 20 degrees. So you can see how you can adjust this to really give this a nice smooth curve inside of your object. And then the other thing you could do is maybe come in here and maybe scale this out a little bit in order to create kind of a interesting shape or you could scale it back in. So something like this. And you can see how you've got this shape that you can kind of sculpt into whatever you want. And you can do a soften smooth in here in order to smooth this, smooth this object out. And then if you really wanted to, you could use an extension like joint push pull, which allows you to push pull multiple faces in order to push pull all of these to give them a little bit of thickness. So like, let's say for example, that I was to offset these, um, I'm gonna go ahead and type in a value of like two inches or maybe four inches and then click you can see how you can use that to thicken this shape in order to create a really interesting 3D shape. And then there's other things you could do as well. Like if you wanted to, you could take all of these, maybe move them up and stretch your object. And then maybe move this across and maybe up. And so this would work on other shapes as well. Like for example, let's say that we were to draw kind of a bigger rectangle like this, and then we were to split it up or divide it. So let's say we did five divisions or something like that. And let's say we were to come in here and bend these just a little bit. So you can see how I'm able to come in here with the rotate tool and kind of bend this along an arc. So you can see how I can create kind of a bent shape like this, and then I could group this, and I can do the same thing with FFD where I can start making adjustments to that control cage. And then when, once I've created that shape, I could do the same thing with joint push pull where I could come in here and I could thicken that. So then you could soften that face if you wanted to. So you could use this to kind of sculpt out a shape like this if you wanted to. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I know this turned into kind of more of a principles of FFD type video. Um, so, but you can use this um, to start generating whatever kind of shapes you want to inside of SketchUp. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.